Hello guys and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a saving checkpoints system from scratch in Roblox Studio. The first thing that we're going to do is create a script in server script service. Name this script leader stats. This is going to be a script where we have our leader stats and we're going to have it called stage. So insert the first script I have in the paste bin in the description called leader stats script. That is the first script. Now it is important that you publish the game. I had this game published before I started the video or the recording, but it's important that you publish the game if you want this to work. After you publish the game, I want you to go to game settings, security, and enable studio access to API services and click save. If you don't do this, it will not work. Now, I want you to create a folder in the workspace. Name this folder, saving checkpoints. Now in this folder, we are going to create a part and set this part up to be the checkpoint that you want as is going to be our checkpoint. Remember to anchor it and now name the part to one. It's going to be our first checkpoint. Now in this checkpoint, I want you to create a script. Name this script touched script. Now insert the second script that is named touch script linked in the description. What this script does is it gets the player service. Then it fires a function when the player loads into the game. Then when the player touches the part, it fires a bindable event. Now quickly, let's create this bindable event and name this event stage change. Make sure it is exactly as I have it set here. So it finds the stage change event and it fires it and it sends over the information with the player name and the name of the part in this case one. Now create a new script and name this script player spawner. Now in this script paste the third script that is linked in the description in the pastement that's called player spawner script. What this script does, it gets the player service. It fires a function when the player loads into the game. And then every time that the player's character loads, it fires this new function. Here, we find the stage value, and then we find the player in the workspace. So we can use the humanoid root part. Then we create a function that essentially checks if the player stage is zero. And if it's zero, it just does nothing. But if it's greater than zero, let's say one, it teleports the player to the to stage one or the current checkpoint. And here now we call the function. So every time that the player's character is added, it fires the function. Now we are going to create a third script and I want you to name this script stage updater. In this script, paste the fourth and final script I have linked in the description. First, we get the player service. Then we have the function that runs when the bindable event is fired. So you see over here when we click when the event is fired, when it's fired, then it runs this function in this different script. So here we find the player in the players folder. Then we find the leader stats in the player or we find then we find the stage value and we check to see if the player is el eligible for the next stage. If the player is, which if let's say the player is stage one and they're on stage two, the, uh, then they're eligible for the next stage. But if they're on stage two and they're on, but they're trying to go on stage one, then they're not eligible. Then it updates 
their stage. And that is it. Now, I click play. I'm on stage zero. I go to stage one. I reset. I respawn at stage one. I go to stage two. I stop playing. Let's say I leave. Now I rejoin. And I respawn at stage two. Uh, thank you for watching. I put a lot of effort in these videos. And I really hope that you like and subscribe. I hope this video helped you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.